welcome to the session uh, supercharge your apm automation with custom plugins we have uh, sudarshan selvraj who is going to facilitate this session today uh, we glad he joined he is having ample amount of experience into automation and working as an sdr in amazon uh, over to you hey, sudarshan thanks a lot for that so hey uh, good afternoon folks so i am sudarshan and i am working as an uh, sdr in amazon for like a couple of years now so uh, i have also been uh, like actively contributing to some of the open source cool projects uh, that revolves on the automation and i'm like uh, like one who always love to automate uh, things that can't be automated right so yeah that's uh, pretty much about me and uh, quickly uh, jumping into the uh, crux of the today's uh, meeting right so uh, what we will be focusing primarily here is like so we just like uh, uh, have a touch base on like uh, what apm is and what uh, current apm 2.0 architecture uh, brings to the table and the more focus will be given to the the plugin concept of it right like what apm plugin is how it can make our test better what different plugins that is there in the community and how we can make use of those plugins to make the automation life more easier right so that is the kind of the like a core agenda of it and uh, we will not be like a uh, diving deep and see like how we will be like writing our own plugins and all so that's kind of a topic for another day but we will just like purely focus on what plugin is and what other things that we could do with the plugin right so that it kind of gives us inspiration to come with creating plugins or other uh, ideas as such so that will be the primary focus for the day now so uh, having said that like uh, yeah so uh, we know like a plugin is a, is a concept which has been recently introduced in apm 2.0 right so it makes more sense for us to understand the background of what apm is the decent architecture that has been made so with that context we will be easy to it will be easy for us to grab the what plugin is how we can use the plugin and what is the rationale behind why plugin exists like that's also something we need to explore right so yeah to go to that section first we will just try to cover the very basics of all the uh, the concept that has been introduced as part of apm 2.0 So in traditional like automation where uh, APM one exists, so what it is there? So we have a client, so which we consume in our test for writing our automation cases, and we have a server that takes care of like managing automation runs into the device, executing the device commands, everything right. Everyone happy, test is happy, I'm happy. So why do you need to do the architecture? So that's a bigger question now, right? So the one uh, like bigger problem that APM one uh, carries the uh, like uh, for a long way is. so uh, currently the uh, like uh, the server core and the driver is tightly coupled together if you if you're coming from a web background like you should be having a very clear context where so we will have a client so we will have a server and we use a term called driver so that driver is specific for which browser you going to automate so similarly in apm we also have a console called driver so we have like a different drivers for android for ios what not but the problem with the apm one is like the driver is tightly coupled with your uh, apm server itself so whenever you install your apm server all the drivers is also get installed together with the server itself okay it's good right why you have to go and do an additional installation for drivers right yeah that's a good question but the problem there arises like uh, the usage of driver is like up to the project and up to the team right like let's say I, my project requires only automating an android device why i should be downloading an ios driver as part of my installation right or someone might be just using the ios driver why have they have to like install and add over to the server that's the one problem the second problem is like version incompatibility hey let's say like uh, i have a server package i have a driver package there is an update to a driver instead of just updating the driver i have to update the entire server package all together why have to do it that's kind of expense operation again and again it goes on update everything all together so that is one of the primary concerns that apm one has so what in apm2 the team did is like so they kind of come up with a major revamp where they segregated both core and drivers as a separate uh, modules now so driver can independently exist as a separate package and apm server can still work without any drivers altogether so it's up to the user they kind of plug and play hey i want a ios driver just install it i want android driver install it and if there is any like future if they needs any up, uh, like update to the driver so they just like let me to update that particular driver right all other modules still remains the same so that is the kind of a functionality which apm 2.2 brings on the table and that's kind of a major change too so the other aspect of uh, apm 2.0 is like and this is kind of the very uh, like uh, the cool thing which i really liked about the uh, like apm 2.0 architecture is the plugins so uh, like yeah i will not cover what much plugins we will just like uh, keep it for the other slides but just give you like overview so this plugins are kind of like a, a reusable modules 
So that also exists as part of your driver package or the uh, core APM server itself. It also acts as a driver, but it has a different duties compared to the driver. So both are looks may look similar or may have some overlapping functionalities too, but it is completely for two different purposes. So similar to how you like have multiple drivers, you can have multiple plugins, you can install it based on your need. And when like running a server, you just like uh, instruct the APM to you say, hey, use these plugins. And that kind of takes care of everything. And we will cover more in like uh, later slides. And one of the uh, improvements that APM uh, 2.0 uh, introduced is like the debugging capability. So the logging has been improved uh, way better now. So since every package now has a separate logging mechanism, so that logs will be more detailed now. So each modules like logs will be prefixed with the module name. So we can exactly root cause, hey, the, there is an error and which module is causing that error. So we could easily like a, like a pinpoint, okay, this is not an issue with the server or this is an issue with the driver or with the plugin. So that is something that has been drastically uh, improved. And yeah, the fourth is the decoupled dependencies and version compatibility. So as I covered before, right? So now we, since we have decoupled uh, like all the entities now, so now user has the control of uh, managing the versions of different things based on their needs. So it's not no mandate like my APM server should always be in this version, APM driver should always be this version. So it's all about the user based on the driver, what they are using. So like if I'm using Android driver version something X, if I wanted to update it, I have the flexibility to update just the driver rather than the server. So those are the, some of the cool things that has been uh, introduced as part of the latest uh, uh, changes. So yeah. So now uh, like, I guess like everyone has some base context of like what APM2 is. So now uh, we will just like focus on the second part that we discussed on the previous slide, right? APM plugins. So the very first question before even jumping into like uh, exploring what plugin is, how to use, why would, why do we need plugin? So even today, uh, if you take APM1, right? So we were like happy, I have like a test case, I have uh, like server, I write some bunch of tests, some actions, some assertions, everything runs fine, right? So why do we really need a plugin? That's kind of a question that arises right, when someone looks into it. So uh, like to give the, some background, so let's say uh, in typical automation world, like uh, whenever I want to automate something, I will just like use a client, I will create a server, I will just run, write the test and I will run it. So uh, after a certain point, we may need to like, uh, like, like include some additional feature to our test case. So let's say I want to add a reporting, very basic need for any automation framework, right? So what typically we will do, so based on the client, so whether it is going to be Java-based client or JavaScript-based client, we will look out for any existing reporting model available. So in case of TestNG, we have like a extent report, we will use of the extent report, we create a report. In case of if you are the client is using a WebDriver IO, so there are a lot of reporters available, we just plug in it. We will run it and it gets a report. That sounds good, right? But the problem uh, where it uh, comes is like, so all these solutions are client agnostic. So today you are using Java client, so you kind of uh, download and uh, integrated the uh, extent report in Java world, you get the report. In JavaScript, well, similarly, there is some other library, you will be utilizing it, right? But what if your company uh, uses two different uh, uh, like uh, clients for two different projects, but you want some uniformity in the reporting, right? So that can't be achieved with the client side pro like uh, architectures now, because even though you could get the report with all the data, do we still have the same report at the end of the day? No, right? The template, the, the theme, everything will be changed. So I'm just like quoting this as an example. So, but like there are other lot other use cases when let's say like as part of your test, you want to export some metrics from the device. That is like, if you want to implement it, you have to implement it for each client now. So Java needs a separate implementation, JavaScript needs a separate implementation. And that's kind of like overburden, right? So this is a problem number one. The problem number two is, so let's say like, uh, okay, now you are still okay that you wanted to implement a client side functionality for all this uh, problem, like uh, uh, things. But the one of the problem now comes is like, so now the client and the device is tightly coupled, right? So let's say you want to run some commands on the device and get some metrics out of it on an interval basis. So now when you implement these logics in your client side, so the problem is whenever you need to execute a test, that test should always resize on the same machine where the device is connected to. Otherwise, you can't be able to run those commands on the device, right? So now your test and device is kind of more coupled now. So if you want to scale it out in future, it, it will be very hard, right? Or if you want to move out of uh, like a typical architecture and uh, come up with a Selenium grid, it won't work. The, the client will break because it can't establish or communicate with the device altogether. So these are all the some of the problem statements where APM plugin comes in and uh, resolves it, right? 
So yeah, like this is the kind of like, just why do we need really a APM plugin? So yeah, uh, so like uh, similar to driver. So currently what happens is like, so driver is a, a, like kind of a package uh, which is maintained by community or someone, we just consume it. Similarly, plugins are also a reusable package uh, which is created in community and maintained by community. But also it also has a flexibility where you can create your own plugin. So it's not always like uh, I will, I will just look out for the community for any plugins. I just need to download it and use it. No, you still has an ability to create your own plugin. So it's just kind of a node module. Like so, to, to put it in a very simpler word, so how you create a, like a simple node module, like a page object or export something out of it, and you're using it in your test site. Similarly, plugins are kind of the same. Instead of creating it in a page object, so APM has given you a contract how the plugin class should look, what it should implement. You just implement those classes and export it and give it to APM. So APM will in, like include that plugin as part of its server instantiation. So all the methods will get called. So yeah, consider this as a testing listener, right? You create a listener, you attach it to your uh, testing uh, like uh, execution. The methods you have implemented will be called as part of the execution, right? Like on before class, after class, on test method. Similarly, plugin also has a similar construct where it has a predefined set of methods that will be getting called in the context of the text execution. So let's say like whenever someone creates a new session, a method will get called with certain set of information. Before delete session, you will get a certain set of information. In between each command calls, you will get a certain set of information. It's all about your creativity, what you're going to implement with that plugin is up to you, right? So APM just gives a skeleton. You create your own plugin, just plug it based on your needs and boom, right? So it's now like kind of a, like a language agnostic. It's residing in a server side. So you write once, anyone could use it, the plugin, right? Even if it is not uh, like a, if the requirement is specific, even into your team, it's kind of a more usable solution. In tomorrow, if a different team uses a different client, wants to still onboard to the solution, they can just right away use it, right? So that's uh, like one good thing like uh, that plugin can uh, offer us today. So yeah, so again, like uh, this is about the compatibility we uh, like even uh, talked about, right? Like. Uh, it doesn't matter which client you're going to use. End of three, it is kind of a re reusable plugin. Uh, like it's kind of a server side residing uh, module. Uh, wherever you start APM server, just install that plugin, irrespective of which client you're going to use. And still, it is going to work all the way around. So that's the best part of this plugin itself. And since it resides on the server side, right? Like, so now, uh, okay. So now the plugin we have created, we have installed, and it is there living in the server, right? So. One interesting part uh, with this aspect is like, so now your plugin is kind of uh, like a uh, like integrated part of APM server itself. So it has like a lot of capabilities unlocked now. So you can go update the existing server logic or you bring a new capability, like what not, like you cannot, you can now kindly, you're kind of creating a new APM server altogether itself. So rather than building it from scratch, you just plug in some module and that kinds of, that kind of enables a way where you go and modify those things do some cool stuff around it, right? So it's also bring us a lot of customization in the server aspect. So, yeah. Okay, so now we have been talking a lot about plugins, why it has been used. So how exactly it is like a, a, like a implemented and a running, right? So uh, typically like no changes or very minimal changes required in client set based on the plugin that you're gonna use. So uh, what we will be doing in, I have a client set, I installed it on my machine. I started writing my test. Even without the plugin, you still need to start an APM server now. So that APM server, you pass in some like capability or like options and your APM server will be listening. So you send a command from the client, APM server receives that client, executes it from the driver, sends the response. So this is the current way of communication. So now we are coming up with this plugin where it is plugged in the middle of a client and a driver. So a client makes a request, the server receives that request and it passes the request to each of the plugins. So you may load n number of plugins as part of your server, right? So that command will be passed to the each plugin and each plugin has its own responsibility. Right? So maybe one plugin, I will be just using it for a logger. I will just log out, hey, I have received a, like a request from the client with this URL and this data. And I will pass on that request to the next plugin in the like a uh, pipeline, right? So that plugin may have a different uh, like uh, usage. It will just do it and at the end, the request will be passed to the driver. So now driver execute that command on the mobile device and it sends a response. 
So let's say if it is going to be a click action, it clicks, it performs a clicks on the device and sends a response. Now again, it comes to the plugin like a one by one and each plugin will do its own operation. And when it comes to this logger plugin, it's logs like, hey, I have sent a click command and I got a response to it. It has been logged in a file. So based on the usage, each plugin will do its own operation. It sends a response back to the client itself. So now it's kind of a like kind of interceptor now. It also, we can say it's a bridge between a client and a driver where it just kind of enhances the functionalities of the driver altogether. So that's the kind of overview, like what the uh, plugin is and uh, how it has been uh, used inside the server. Okay, so like what I have having for this uh, demo is like, you know, so I have picked a few of the uh, like plugins that is currently actively maintained by the community. And I've also written some of the test using that plugin and we will do a comparison, you know, with the plugin, how the test looks and without the plugin, how the test might look and what benefits this plugin gonna offer in terms of our automation, right? So that is how like the comparison like uh, we will be doing today. So uh, to give uh, like a background, like I already have installed all the uh, prerequisites. So the first one would be the APM. Also I have already installed APM uh, version two. Now it's already there. And I've also installed like a couple of drivers that will be required for uh, automation. And to see like what drivers we have installed, we have a very good CLA command. So uh, APM driver list. So we'll give you the list of drivers. So I have installed a couple of drivers and we also see like what version of the driver has been installed, right? Similarly, I have also installed a bunch of uh, uh, plugins. So APM plugin list. So this is the command to list all the plugins. Yeah. So there are like four plugins I have installed. So first, like let's let's see the test. And I will also show like what each plugin contributes to the test. Right? We will just like uh, do some deep dive over there. And we also like uh, someone may be wondering like how I will be installing this plugin, right? So we can use this command and just like name of the plugin. So this source is something like where your plugin resides. So it's not always mandated. Like you should always uh, like publish your plugin to GitHub or NPM. It could still reside in your local machine. So based on your source, instead of NPM, you put local and you put a file path, APM will go and fix that as a plugin and install it for you. So in this case, like all the plugins that I'm gonna use is like already published to NPM. So I have used this command to install those plugins. So that's how the plugin installation is taken care. So now I will just like walk you through the app that we're gonna use, right? So this is like a, an emulator and I have already installed a, like a demo app for the automation. So this is kind of like a app which has like different UI actions uh, that can be like used for the uh, like automation codes, right? So we will be like taking an example of like a, a dragging of some components here. So we have this capability and we have some scrolls. Even we have a web view. So here in this web view, like I just like loaded my uh, profile here. And like we have like scenarios like lazy loading where like this message will like, like appear and disappear like a, with a, in a timeout. So we can test like how dynamic element loadings are there. Yeah, a few other bunch of capabilities uh, are uh, there in the application. So the primary focus or the area of this demo is going to be, so we will see how we can utilize uh, like a parallel execution as part of the plugin. How we gonna like uh, like write the test without adding weights so or with the automatic weights, how we can like write an automation test. And uh, how we gonna like uh, mock the API calls or intercept the API requests. So that is something we gonna look. And the last aspect is the reporting. How easily we could like get a very beautiful report with all videos, screenshots, everything, right? So all this happens without a zero configuration in the my client test code. So that's the best part of it altogether. So yeah, now let's look into the uh, uh, code part. So I have already written a test. So this is the kind of the test case uh, that tests all the functionalities which we have uh, discussed now, right? So let's say like uh, if I wanted to, I wanted to perform the drag and drop from the UI. So I just like logged in, moved to the like a uh, page where that uh, the drag and drop area was written, right? So to just perform drag and drop, what I did is like, hey, this is my element from which need to be dragged, and this is the element where I need to drop that particular element, right? So and look the code, it's just like one liner where I say, hey, gesture, do a drag and drop. Hey, Sudarshan. Uh, yeah. 
Sorry to interrupt. Uh, so first thing, uh, we can just increase the font in the interest of the audience. That's right. Okay. And uh, second thing, we have a couple of questions. Uh, okay. Do you want to take it up now or the park it for the? Yeah, maybe like we could like take it up if it makes sense. So uh, a fairly simple one. Webhub is uh, is curious to understand dependency versus plugin. So you want to take it up now? How dependency is different from the plugin? Ah, uh, dependency is like a, so when we say dependency is like a, it, it incorporates both a driver and the plugin dependency, right? So today you may use a version of a different version of a driver or a plugin. So those are now dependencies of your APM servers altogether. So and the, the flexibility that gives is like you can either update your driver based on your need or you can update the plugin based on it. It's not like mandated, like everything should be updated all at once. So that is what I meant, like the dependency versus the plugin thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, so in the interest of time, the we share, you will be sharing this APK file for the application that is there for the demo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I will just like share the the repo and okay. all the files okay. related to the test set. Yeah, I will be dropping it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Uh, I hope the font is now better, right? So. Yes, it is quite good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I like I were, we were like talking about like performing the drag and drop, right? So see, this is how the code looks with the plugin, where you just like execute a command, you just pass in the source and destination, and it does the uh, drag and drop for you. But when we look the same code without the plugin, right? So we can take this. So I have the same test here, okay, to perform the drag and drop. So what we need to do is like, so you need to identify the elements that needs to be dragged and dropped. You find the like position of that element in the UI where that element resides. Then use that position and call another API to perform. So just for performing one drag and drop, you need to do all these things. This is just a very simple uh, like operation I'm talking about. Just think of any complex uh, actions that need to perform between the elements, right? So you need to do all these uh, things internal, and uh, this may also like a like if you want to port it to a different client, then again that client needs to implement all this implementation all together, right? Getting the location, this syntax may different for uh, like a Java client, JavaScript client, based on the client you are using, right? So it will be very hard, like even in future if you want to migrate something, then these all nuances you need to take care of it. But we have a plugin called a Gesher plugin, so which makes these things more simple, as I said before, right? So all you need is like you need to find the elements and just pass the reference of the elements to the method. And in the backend, it does all the magics for you. So whatever you're doing it in the client side is now moved to the server side package. So this plugin will take care of like identifying the like location of the element, doing all the like crazy stuffs in the backend and it scrolls for you. So now your UI looks more cleaner. And also in terms of execution time also, it, it has so much contribution, right? Because uh, there are multiple calls that is being made from the client to getting the location, then again, performing another action. So using this way, you're just making one call after finding the elements. So internally server calls are not much expensive than the client calls, right? Everything happens in the same machine. So this is kind of one thing the team has built, right? Like, I guess it's like built with Shini and uh, Sai. And this is like a cool innovation, you know? So like, which makes like all your gestures very simple. It's just like one method I'm showing, but uh, if you take like, a, there are like a lot of other methods also it supports. So I will also attach all the links in the slide so that you can refer. So yeah, so we have methods for right, left, down. So scrolling in element into a view, drag and drop. So they have like multiple like dishes, like based on your needs, it's like, it's like a one line script that you can incorporate in your test. And like, yeah, all your actions are uh, like made very easy now. So yeah, this is uh, one test I wanted to highlight. So the next one we saw was like uh, the uh, API interception or mocking, right? So in AP, like uh, automation world, especially in mobile, right? Like mocking is one of the biggest pain. So I, I'm not like uh, encouraging that like we should be doing mocking, but there are times where like, uh, like you need to like look into the API calls that is made by the application to make some assertion or to make sure it doesn't uh, like run into any errors. So you need to, you need to have some interception. But with the current setup, this interception is very ex expensive and like it, it's a, like a manual intensive task, right? You need to like create a proxy server. You need to go update the device with some proxy settings. And the real problem arises like when you wanted to do parallel runs, right? So if I have two devices on the same machine, I wanted to like mock the device in isolation, that is not possible. So you need to come up with a lot of client-side code, do some crazy things to achieve it. 
but with this plugin architecture so we have a plugin called uh, apm interceptor which does this with a zero configuration from your client side the only thing we need to do is like make sure we install a certificate on your device manually that's a one time activity so once that is done so this is how the code looks so you just run your test as it is now and you just register a mock to it hey like whenever my uh, application makes a call to this endpoint we just update this body so basically like uh, we, uh, what i have shown is like i have a web view in the application so what i am trying to do is like i am trying to update this content as part of the response so it will be replaced with this keyword that's it i am not doing any installation or i am doing any setup here all i did was install the plugin in server side and install the certificate on my uh, device and i started writing the test right this is not where it starts right the fun comes here so it also does the uh, like a, a mocking on top of that you can also intercept all the api calls made by the application so i just simply execute a command start listening it will just listen for all the outgoing requests from the device i perform some operations now i say hey stop listening and this will returns me the list of api calls made by the application right i can just quickly loop through it look for an api what body it has been sent or what response it got i could do assertion or i could use those values for any other uh, further operations so yeah so without this plugin achieving this particular mocking is very tedious right i have like a, a skeleton but it is not a working code so you should do something like this like install a proxy module and for each uh, parallel execution you need to create a separate proxy then you need to attach this proxy like you were all to your device manually and also like you need to have all these like uh, internal checking logics in the code itself it's very hard bound so in future if we want to port the same logic to a different uh, client architecture maybe in java you might not have a module like this right so you will be kind of a block now so how are you going to do you need to like look for any other alternative solution it may be hard to implement or something but with this plugin it's one time thing written in server side just install it the same concept works going to be work for any client you going to use you just like call a method with a parameter and it takes care of you right so now like mocking made simple with this plugin so yeah like again this also resides in the same uh, repository so just for your reference like uh, yeah so, so like all step what required everything will be part of this uh, like repository so do check it out <clears throat> thanks sudarshan for this great demo we have a couple of more questions coming mm -hmm. in so <clears throat> with respect to this interception plugin that interceptor plugin that you have demoed so uh, one of the participants wanted to understand that uh, do we have any plugin similar for the web automation like in like in selenium right actions apis or mm -hmm. iot gui right so do we have anything specific you want to highlight here i uh, know like uh, yeah that's a great question by the way you know like and also like that is something like how the community move forward right so mm -hmm. when the plugin initially like this concept was introduced in apm right like uh, so we try to replicate similar this weight plugin and all for selenium but again it is kind of poor client technology because currently apm server doesn't have the capability of plugins but we do have like initiated some solutions on the client basis but which is not actively maintained and if something they want also they like maybe they could check it out and take that as an inspiration and they can like work on a, like a solution for it but currently with this plugin architecture we don't have a same replica for uh, selenium world but at least for ap like ap mocking currently with uh, like the bidai protocol right that should have made easy at least okay uh, so one comes a great question based on the in the scenario mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so the participant says that we have an application where we have uh, where they are unable to inspect few pages which are inside the mobile app through apm and those pages are rendering in the web page content okay. but still in that few pages right they are unable to inspect the page source okay so will the plugin this kind of plugin will be helpful in this particular case yeah so yeah like so see again like i am not particularly sure why the like a page source is not being rendered there but if this is something an app specific or any configuration that needs to be made in the app level or is it the different logic in the app how it renders right maybe we could create a plugin for that right. particular app so we can customize the let's say like end of the day it is that like get page source method is something that returns xml from the device you can override that functionality you okay. put in your customization there 
and that returns the customized xml to the in- inspector now so your plugin kind of like do, does the page source action instead of driver based on what action you wanted to make right so, so that I'll, is i'll be referring to web view plugin something in this regard you want to highlight here web view plugin and uh, like it doesn't matter whether it is a web view or uh, like a native view right end of the day it is going to be a plugin and do you think your plugin knows how exactly to extract the page source of that particular application okay. you have that implementation in that plugin load it as part of your uh, apm session and when the inspector ask for the page source right instead of your plugin like get it, like allowing it to go to the driver it intercept the request it does all the magic for you returns the page source by itself based on the custom logic you going to write all right but i don't think they like where there is like a like a general plugin that going to solve it because i'm not sure what's the exact root cause why the view is not yeah. there may be a number of reasons so yeah but that's like an idea for a plugin right if you know the root cause you could just build a plugin out of it thanks suggestion for ed- addressing these questions nicely yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you so much sure. yeah Yeah, like one last thing I have for is like the reporting. So now I you know like I have like a uh, like done something. I have executed my test. I want a very beautiful report, right? How I want to integrate it? Like I know today in the February we contest I have a lot of extremely reports that we need to integrate it. But that is kind of not very exhaustive information that I am going to get it. I want to get screenshots. I want to get the video recordings. I want to get the device logs. What not? Like what possible information I could get from that session, right? So we have created a plugin called a device farm. which does it for you so again zero configuration from client side everything resides in the server you just run your test open the portal everything will be there for you so like i will just like like run this test and i will just like show the the final view so now i am just starting the server so that is where the entire crux resides i will just show what is that command so it just like basically an apm server command with some additional argument so this is where we load all the install plugins so previously we showed what are the plugins being installed right we just say use plugins name of the plugins and that's it no additional configuration so apm will load all the plugins so if you search for the plugin right so see as part of the session it shows like what are the plugins that has been registered so here if you see like the drivers are there the plugins are showing up so just now we need to run the test so i will also run the test here so now i am running test in parallel so that means all of my test should run parallelly on two different devices and i haven't made any client side configurations now so everything is tackled by the plugin all together based on the device state it manages all the sessions everything so yeah the test has been initiated in both the devices now let's go and check the portal so this is the device farm so we have like two devices and its state is busy now let's go to the build and see like a uh, yeah my test is running i can see the live view of my test what capabilities it is there and these are all the commands that is being executed as part of the session so yeah we also get the states here right like whether the device is busy or not and once the execution has been completed right we will also get a good video recording of the session so someone wants to play back what exactly happened to root cause the failure they could check into the videos so we also have like cool device logs so maybe sometimes we need to like look into the adb logs or uh, ios logs to make sure like there are no crashes or any unexpected uh, errors we could just like make use of this device logs to check for any anomalies and we also provide this app profiling feature so within the course of your test execution how did the your app performed in terms of cpu and memory right so like at certain point of time like the total cpu usage was like a 400% and out of which 18% was utilized by the app under test similarly for ram so we will give all this metrics out of the box no configuration no installation nothing all you have to do is like install the plugin and load it out so yeah this, this plugin is something which also takes care of like uh, the uh, like parallel automation also and the other good thing is like not just automation you could just like use this plugin for like a manual interacting with the devices so let's say this device may be on any remote machine and uh, you wanted to access the device from your uh, some other different place right so you just like click on this use button and this it kind of like uh, opens a nice ui with the device control and you can just like start interacting with it yeah maybe like maybe i guess the automation has been picked up so it's like a uh, loading here 
So yeah, like basically you will be able to like uh, take the control and like do some bunch of operation, install applications and other, okay. So this is my uh, simulator, right? So all these things with just like one click, client agnostic, all good, right? So yeah, I guess now you, you may get some inspiration, right? Oh, like, okay, what are the different things that can be achieved using plugin? So your project may have a, like a different requirements where you wanted to like a, implement something which is client agnostic. You could just like go ahead with plugin and start implementing it and use it, right? And if it is something more uh, like a common, you can just like publish it to community and anyone in the community can start consuming it. So that's the like overall idea of uh, the uh, this particular demo. And I hope like it was like, uh, it will be informational and uh, you guys really enjoyed it. So thanks for joining and uh, like, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, any questions. Thank you, Sudarshan. It's a wonderful session. And we have a couple of questions coming in. I think we can address it one by one. So although you have addressed most of them, but let's start with uh, one of the quite interesting question that is the, that uh, does this plugin that we have support, you have demoed, it will support clearing the captchas dynamically, right? So no, I guess so. Yeah. No. So like, so, yeah, again, it's still possible with all this new generative ways, like LLMs in place, right? Why right. not you create your own plugin, which going to solve all these captures, right? Nice, cool idea though. Yeah. Yeah, that is spot on. So one of the answer is you have, this slide is already answered that one of the person was asking that where we can find these plugins documented somewhere. So okay. the answer is on the slide, github.com APM test distribution. So you can find all the, all the plugins yeah. uploaded yeah. here. And one other thing to add up here, like a, the, all the community managed and APM managed plugins are already documented in APM documentation site itself. Yes. You could like get to know about all the drivers and plugins that exist today in the market. You could just like go, go there and you can take a look. Yeah. So I just share that link, by the way, apm.io docs ecosystem build plugins. So, right. So there's that yeah, link. Yeah. The one. yeah. So I just shared that. Uh, Sushan wanted to understand, can we able to differentiate between manual and automation, automation session in this particular device farm? That's a great question, right? How they will uh, differentiate the manual session and automation session, right? In browser stack and other device farms, we can mm. differentiate, right? So here, yeah, like, so uh, yeah, that that was again a great question, though. Yeah, we are still like uh, like uh, working on revamping few things, but at this point, we will just like let the users know that like the device is busy now. But mm. yeah, maybe that's a good point to incorporate as well. Like we will be like, we can show a label like whether it has been like used for manual control or automation. Yeah, but currently it's not there. Okay. And I believe Sudarshan, you mentioned that the app sessions in this particular device form is recorded, right? Is it recorded or that is configurable? How it is? Because which, which like the, the recording of the session, yeah, right? app, app sessions, the recording of the app sessions using this device form, is it record? Is it, in a, is it available? The feature? Yeah, it is there. Yeah. The, the video recording of the session at the end of the execution, right? So again, that is like customizable in the case of if you want to enable or disable, you could still do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, one more question, if automation is running and another user will be able to unblock it in the device form or that is locked? No, we, st yeah, it, it is able to unblock it because we, we don't want to end up in a state where like for some X reason that device going to be blocked for so long time. Right. So you can go and still unblock it and use for the automations. Yeah. Okay. So that concurrency is currently there. It, it's there. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, how about with Java client, this particular plugins? Yeah, all the plugins are like client agnostic, irrespective of which client you're going to use, it's still going to be because all the dependencies, everything is completely binded to server side code. So irrespective of which client you're going to call, the end of the day server interrupts in the same way and the plugin will auto interrupts in the same way. So irrespective of which client you're going to use, you can still consume it. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And this device farm is obviously currently open source. Yeah. Uh, Somya was interested to know whether this is open source or paid one. So this is something, the initiative, Sudarshan, that uh, you have just uh, showcased, right? This, yeah, is, yeah. this will be not shown. Uh, you want to take it up now or this is, uh, that is okay? Yeah, yeah. This is kind of like open source for now. So we just like initiated and like everything, like a lot of people are started using it. So it is a open source, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, uh, that's all. I mean, thanks for the wonderful Good. sessions for the show. It was really, yes. really, you know, yeah. fruitful, helpful session. Good. Creating the custom plugins, any quick demo, I mean, or any, any, anything. Uh, you quick, 
they were like i guess like the link you shared like will have the complete context but like you're yeah, building something from scratch that kind of like an exhaustive process like we need to do a lot of setups but yeah like if some that is something we need like maybe we can have like a different session and i can like share that according but the docs that you shared should cover most of that part one person is asking he's faced a problem in ios where the scroll to element works fine for few elements but for few elements scroll doesn't work does this gesture plugin uh, will be able to solve this uh, again, element for ios it's it's like what see like at the end of the day like there are two aspects like maybe the syntactically we may be doing a different thing or there might be a like a underlying issue with the app under test or the ecosystem itself so maybe you can give it a try and see like because the gesture plugin follow the standard of what exactly the w3c suggests how exactly the scroll or events need to be dispatched give it a try if it works then there is definitely something wrong that we might be doing while doing the gesture if it still doesn't work then that that again needs another level of deep dive and see right what might be the exact root cause so yeah thanks sudarshan i think we're done we are running off we are almost on time and it was great session sure. thank you very much everyone for joining in